Father God, I thank you so much for the promises in your word. I thank you, Lord God, that you keep your word all the time and that as we place our trust in you, Lord, we can have confidence that these things come to pass. Thank you, Lord, for your word in Exodus 14, verse 14, that states that you will fight for me, that I only need to be still. I thank you, God, that you're the one who fights for me, that I only need to be still. Help me, Lord, to remain still, not to try to do the fighting in my own strength, for you're the one who battles on my behalf. I thank you for your word, Lord, in Exodus 20, verse 12, that tells me that if I honor my father and my mother, I'll live long in the land that you are giving me. I thank you, God, that this is my portion. I receive it and I embrace it, Lord God. I thank you for your goodness that I'll live long in the land. I thank you that you're showing me creative ways to honor my father and to honor my mother. I thank you for Isaiah 40 verse 29 that declares that you give strength to the weary and that you increase the power of the weak. I thank you, Father, that whenever I'm feeling weary, I'll be honest about it and I'll experience your strength. I thank you, God, that you're increasing my power even when I'm feeling weak. I thank you that your strength is made perfect in weakness. I thank you for Isaiah 40 verse 31 that tells me that as I hope in you, Lord, I will renew my strength. I will soar on wings like eagles. I will run and I will not grow weary. I will walk and I will not be faint. I thank you, God, that this is my portion. I thank you for Isaiah 41 verse 10 that says, Do not fear, for I am with you. Thank you, God, that you're with me. You're Emmanuel, God with us. I thank you, Lord, that I will not be dismayed, for you are my God. I thank you that your word tells me that you will strengthen me and you will help me. You will uphold me with your righteous right hand. Thank you, Lord, for Isaiah 41 verse 13 that says, For I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, Do not fear, I will help you. I will not fear, Lord, for you will help me. And your help is powerful. Your help is perfect. I thank you, God, for Isaiah 43, verse 2, that declares that when I walk through the waters, when I pass through the waters, you will be with me. And when I pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over me. I thank you, Lord, that it declares that when I walk through the fire, I will not be burned. So whatever I'm facing right now, Father, I thank you that it will not touch me. I thank you that I live in a place of immunity. I thank you for your word that says the flames will not set me ablaze. Lord, we saw you doing this for Daniel's friends in your scriptures. And I thank you that you're doing it for me today. That, Lord, I'm protected by you. My household is protected by you. I thank you, Father, for Isaiah 54 verse 10 that says, Though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, my unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. I receive your compassion, Lord. I thank you that your love for me never changes. It will always be perfect. It will always be unconditional. And I receive it fully, Lord. I thank you for Isaiah 54, verse 17. No weapon forged against you will prevail, and you will refute every tongue that accuses you. I thank you, Lord, that this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and this is their vindication from you, declares the Lord. Thank you for this promise, Lord. Thank you that I am a servant of the Lord, and thank you that no weapon that is forged against me will prevail. And that every tongue that accuses me, that you've refuted it already. I thank you for James 1 verse 5 that says, If any of us lack wisdom, we should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault. And that that wisdom will be given to me. I thank you God for the spirit of wisdom and revelation that it belongs to me. I thank you for the spirit of counsel and might that it belongs to me. I thank you for the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, that these things belong to me as stated in Isaiah 11. Thank you so much, God. I thank you for James 4 verse 7 that says, Submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil, 
and he will flee from you. Father, I submit myself to you right now. I thank you that each time I resist the devil, he will flee from me. I thank you for this authority that you've given us, Lord, as we are submitted to you. I thank you for 1 John 1 verse 9. That states that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. I thank you, Lord, that there's no condemnation in you. I thank you, Father, that as I confess my sins, you take it seriously, Lord, and that you're faithful and that you're just and that you forgive me of my sins, Lord. I thank you, Father, for your goodness. I thank you that you purify me and you cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I thank you for 2 Chronicles 7, 14. That states, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Father, may you come in such a powerful way, even as we humble ourselves before you, even as we seek your face and we pray, even as we turn from our wicked ways, may you come, may you hear from heaven, may you forgive us of sin, and may you heal our land. We're desperate for this, Father God. We cannot do it in our own strength, Lord God. We come before you asking for such cleansing over this nation at such a time as this. I thank you, Lord, for Deuteronomy 31 verse 8. The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. Thank you that you are with me, Lord. Thank you that you've gone before me. I thank you, Lord, for your word that says he will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. I will not be afraid, Lord, and I will not be discouraged because you're with me and that you actually have gone before me, Lord God. You're not surprised by anything that we go through. You've already seen it. I thank you, God, that you are already there in the future. Thank you for your kindness, Lord. Thank you that we can rest in you. Thank you for Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. I thank you, Father God, that you've already prepared the details beforehand. You've already planned my prosperity. Your plan is not to harm me. Your plan is to give me a hope and a future. So I choose, Lord God, to be full of hope because this is your plan for me. This is your portion. You've gone before me and you've done these things. Thank you, Lord, for John 3, 16, that you so loved the world and that you gave your one and only son. Thank you that if you can give your one and only son, you won't withhold any good thing from me because you've already given me your best. I thank you, Lord, for your word that tells me that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. I thank you for the God kind of life that is in me. I thank you for this Zoe. I thank you for this God kind of life that functions in me, that I choose, Lord, that I will not settle for second best because this is my portion and this is something that you've already done and you've already given to me. So I choose, Lord, to walk in this dimension. I thank you, Lord, for John 8, 36. So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. I thank you for the freedom that I have in you, Jesus. I thank you that I'm completely free from the fear of man. I'm completely free from sickness and disease. I'm completely free to be who you want me to be. I'm completely free from poverty and lack. I'm completely free from mind-blinding spirits. I'm completely free from every oppression that the enemy might want to pass on to me. I thank you for the freedom that I have in Christ Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for Malachi 3 verse 10, that as I tithe, Lord, and as I bring my tithe into your local church, there'll be food there. I thank you, Father God, that you provide for me. I thank you, Father, that I can test you in this. I thank you, Father God, that you throw open the floodgates of heaven and that you are pouring out so much blessing that there's no room enough to store it. I thank you for Mark 11, 24, that whatever I ask for in prayer, as I believe that I've already received it, it will be mine. 
I thank you, Father, for the blessing of faith. I thank you, Father, that as I believe that it's mine, it is mine. As I believe that I've received it, it is mine. I thank you for Joshua 1, verse 9. I thank you that I can be strong and courageous, that I don't have to be afraid, that I don't have to be discouraged, for you are with me wherever I go. I thank you for Philippians 4, 19, that you will meet all my needs according to your riches in glory in Christ Jesus. As I seek you, Lord, as I pray into these things, as I petition, as I submit myself to you, I thank you that this is my portion. And I thank you that these riches, Lord, are according to your glory. I thank you, Father, that they're not limited to the economic situation my country goes through. I thank you that this is my portion. I thank you for Psalms 18 verse 3. I call to the Lord who is worthy of praise and I've been saved from my enemies. Thank you, Father, that you saved me from my enemies, from anything that would come against my destiny in this life, that you've saved me, Father, from it. I thank you, Father, for the liberty that you have given me as a result of me knowing you as a result of my salvation, as a result of me calling you. May I remember to always call you because you are worthy of all praise. I thank you for Psalm 23 verse 4 that even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil for you are with me. I thank you, Lord, that your rod and your staff comfort me. I thank you for that, Lord, that it doesn't matter how dark the valley is. I thank you, Father, for your goodness. I thank you for Psalm 27, verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? I thank you that fear of man is not my portion. I thank you that you are my stronghold. I thank you for the grace, Lord, to remember, to continuously seek your face and to run to you, Lord God, to go to you as my stronghold, to make you my strong tower. I thank you that you are my light and you are my salvation. I don't need to fear. Remove all fear of man from me, Lord. I thank you that it's not my portion. I thank you for Psalm 34, verse 17. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. I thank you, God, that you respond to my crying out. And I thank you that you hear me as I cry out. I thank you, Father, that you, in response, you deliver me from all my troubles, whatever troubles I face. I thank you that I am delivered from them as I cry out to you. Give me the courage, Lord, to always cry out to you. Give me the courage, Lord God, to always seek your face. I thank you, Lord God, that you hear me as I do so. And I thank you, Lord, that you don't deliver me just from some of my troubles, but I'm delivered from all of them. I thank you, Father, for that, that there are no troubles, Lord God, that you can't deliver me from. You deliver me from financial troubles. You deliver me from relational troubles. You deliver me from health troubles. You deliver me from employment troubles. You deliver me from uh, business troubles. You deliver me from legal troubles. You deliver me from ministerial troubles. You deliver me, Father God. I thank you, Father, for your goodness. Thank you for Psalm 37, verse 4, that as I take delight in you, Lord, that you will give me the desires of my heart. Thank you, Lord, that you're teaching me how to take delight in you. You're showing me what it looks like to take delight in you. You're showing me what it looks like, Lord, to be one who seeks after God. You're showing me, Father God, that you can give me the desires of my heart, that the desires of my heart are not all evil, but that there are many desires that you've actually placed in my heart and that you grant them to me. I thank you for your goodness that I can expect these things, Lord. May I take delight in you more and more. May I delight in your presence May I delight in your laws. May I delight in your words. May I delight in your truth. May I delight, Lord, in being in prayer. May I delight in you, Lord, in your nature, in your character. Teach me how to delight in you, God. 
I thank you, Lord, for Psalm 50, Psalms 50, verse 15. And call on me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver you, and you will honor me. I pray, Father, for the grace to continuously call on you in the day of trouble. May I not go and get into the flesh. May I not run or pursue other things. But may I just call on you in that day of trouble. May you be the first I run to as my strong tower. I thank you for Psalm 86 verse 5. You, Lord, are forgiving and good, abounding in love to all who call to you. I thank you, Father, for the power of calling to you. And I thank you that you're showing me your love even as I do so. Lord, I recognize your nature today, that you are forgiving and that you are good and that you are abounding in love. You're full of love. You're overflowing in love toward me. I thank you that this is my portion, Lord. You're not far away. You're here displaying your forgiveness, displaying your goodness and abounding in love toward me as I call on you. I thank you for Proverbs 13 verse 11 where you state that dishonest money dwindles away, but whoever gathers little by little makes it grow. I thank you, Lord, that even though I'm gaining financially, just little by little, I thank you, Father God, that it will grow. I thank you, Lord God, that you protect me from the temptation that comes through impatience of dishonest money. I thank you, Lord, that you're showing me that it will dwindle away very quickly. I thank you for Proverbs 22 verse 6. Start children off on the way they should go and even when they're old they will not turn from it. I thank you Father God for your goodness over my household. I thank you Lord that even the way we've started off our children they will not turn away from it. They will not turn away from the values we've taught them. They will not turn away from the worship we've taught them. They will not turn away from your word, but they will know you all the days of their lives. They will walk in righteousness. They will walk uprightly, obeying you. They will walk in the fear of the Lord. I thank you, Father, for your goodness. Lord, may you show us how to truly start them off in the way that they should go. Lord, where we've started them off in the wrong way, may you reveal these things to us. May you expose it, Lord God, that we would correct things. I pray, Father, that you would open our eyes, that we would see as you see the things that concern you, Lord, in our parenting, that, Lord, you would reveal them to us. Give us the grace to parent our children effectively, Lord. I thank you for Revelation 3, verse 5. The one who is victorious will, like them, be dressed in white. I will never blot out the name of that person from the book of life but will acknowledge that name before my Father and his angels. I thank you that my name will never be blotted out. I thank you that you've given me victory. I thank you, God, that you will dress me in white. I thank you that my name is being acknowledged before your Father and your angels. I will not be ashamed of you and your teachings, Lord Jesus. I thank you for your goodness. Romans 8 verse 28 and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. I thank you, Father, that as I pray, as I intercede, as I cry out to you, you work all things together for my good because I'm one who loves you and I've been called according to your purpose. I receive it, Lord God, and I thank you for it, Jesus. I thank you for Romans 10, 9 to 10, where you say in your word, Lord, that as we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and we believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. I thank you that salvation is mine. It belongs to me in its fullness. I have declared with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. I thank you, Father, for your goodness. I thank you, Lord God, for the fullness of salvation in my household, in my life, in my business, in my ministry. I thank you, Father, for the better things associated with salvation, Lord. 
I thank you for the things that accompany salvation, that these are my portion in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you, Lord, for Psalm 9, verses 9 to 10. That, Lord, you are a refuge for those who are oppressed. You're a stronghold in times of trouble. Thank you that I can always run to you. Thank you, Father, that those who know your name trust in you. I trust in you, Lord, and that they've never, that you've never forsaken those who seek you. I'll keep seeking your face, Lord, and I thank you that you never forsake me. I thank you, Lord, for Philippians 4, verse 6 to 7. Do not be anxious about anything. I will not be anxious, Lord God, for I know that in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, I can present my requests to you and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, guards my heart and guards my mind in Christ Jesus. I thank you that this is my portion as a believer. This is what comes with my salvation. I will not be anxious about anything, but in every situation I can pray and I can petition and I can give thanks. I can present my requests to you, not just some situations, but all. I thank you, Father, for that. Come and have your way, Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for Proverbs 3, verse 5 to 6, that I can trust in the Lord with all my heart and I lean on not lean not on my own understanding and i thank you lord god that in all my ways i will submit to you and as a result you will make my paths straight i thank you that this is my portion lord that as i put my trust in you i experience the blessing of doing so i do away lord with trusting my own understanding but i submit to you your ways are much higher than my ways lord your knowledge far surpasses mine. I humble myself before you, Lord God, and I ask that you make my path straight before me. Make the crooked path straight before me, please, Lord. I thank you, Father, for James 5, verses 14 to 15, where you declare that if anyone among us is sick, he can call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint him with oil, in the name of the Lord and the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well, that the Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they'll be forgiven. Firstly, Lord, I thank you that this is our portion in the body of Christ, that we can go to those who will pray for us in faith, those who oversee, those who are elders. And I thank you, God, that that prayer of faith is so powerful and that we will be raised up and we will be healed completely. Even as an elder myself, I thank you that I can walk in that power because this is your promise to your body. This is your promise to us. I thank you, Father God, for Matthew 6, 31 to 33, where I don't have to worry anymore about what I will eat or what I will drink or what I will wear, for it's the pagans that run after these things. Thank you, God, that you already know that I need these things, but I will seek first your kingdom and I'll seek first your righteousness so that all these things will be given to me. They'll be added to me as well. Help me, Lord, and give me the grace to seek after your kingdom first and not to seek after the things. Lord, I choose to only worship you. If there's anything in my heart right now that has become an idol, anything that I'm seeking first before you i ask lord that you would reveal this to me i turn away from that and i choose lord that you are first in my life i thank you god for psalm 103 verses 2 to 5. praise the lord O my soul and forget not all his benefits thank you god that we have benefits in you i will not forget them lord god you forgive all my sins and you heal all my diseases. You redeem my life from the pit and you crown me with love and compassion. You satisfy my desires with good things so that my youth is renewed like the eagles. This is my portion and I receive it, Lord God. I thank you for these benefits associated 
with my salvation. I will not forget them, Father. I thank you that it includes healing. I thank you, God, that it includes my desires. I thank you, Father God, that it includes good health. I thank you, God, that you renew my youth. I thank you for your goodness, Jesus. I receive it. It's my portion. I thank you for Psalm 107, verses 13 to 16, that then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. I thank you, God, that this is my portion. You saved me from my distress. You brought me out of darkness, utter darkness, and you broke away my chains. Thank you, Father, that I can give thanks to you for your unfailing love and your wonderful deeds for mankind. I thank you that you are loving, that you cause the sun to shine on all of us. I thank you that you break down gates of bronze and you cut through bars of iron on our behalf. You're a good God and I worship you and I magnify you. You're so good to us, Lord. Thank you so much for this kindness. Thank you so much for your goodness. I thank you, Lord, for John 14, 13 to 16, that you will do whatever I ask in your name so that your Father will be glorified in the Son. I thank you, Lord, that you've said that I can ask you for anything in your name and you will do it. Even as I love you, Lord, I will keep your commandments and you will ask the Father and he will give me another advocate, the Holy Spirit, to help me and to be with me forever. I thank you, Lord God, for Ephesians 3, 16 to 19. I thank you, God, that we can agree with this prayer that Paul prayed, that out of your glorious riches, you will strengthen me, Lord, with power through your spirit in my inner being so that Christ may dwell in my heart through faith. And I thank you, Lord, that I'll be rooted and established in love that I'll have power together with the Lord's holy people and I will grasp how wide and how long and how high and how deep is the love of Christ. And I will know this love that surpasses knowledge and that, Lord, I will be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Father, this is so mind-blowing, but I receive it, Lord, in its fullness. And I thank you for this amazing grace and I thank you for this amazing salvation that you've granted to me. These things are my portion and I choose to walk in them, Father, and I will not settle for second best. I thank you, my God, for Luke chapter 11, verses nine to 13, where you tell me that I can ask and it will be given to me. I can seek and I will find. I can knock and the door will be opened to me. I thank you, God, that everyone who asks receives. Everyone who seeks will find. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. I thank you, Father God, that you are my Father. And I thank you, Lord, that even though we are evil, we know how to give good gifts to our children. So I thank you that even so much more, our Father in heaven gives us the Holy Spirit when we ask. So we want to be continually filled with your Holy Spirit in this season, Lord. We need the power of your spirit. We need the wisdom of your spirit. We need the teaching of your spirit. We need the truth of the Holy Spirit. We need the comfort of the Holy Spirit. And I thank you that you give us this wonderful gift of the Holy Spirit in this season. Lord, we embrace all these promises and we know that they are a portion in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.